It's that time again. The time where I apparently have to explain about fake storage devices on sale on eBay, Amazon and elsewhere. I've made a number of videos on this topic in the past, the most recent being this one in January 2021. Inevitably, as time passes, people begin to imagine that with the general trend of technology going down in price and increasing in power or capacity over time, that because the video is a bit old, the information in the video must be out of date, and the products people see with the current prices and capacities must be genuine. What am I talking about? Well, flash storage devices like this, or this, which you will find on Wish, on eBay, on AliExpress, on Amazon, and yes, in some cases in actual physical bricks and mortar retail stores. I'm not going to go into the technical detail of how these things work, see the previous videos for that, but these devices report that they've got terabytes of storage when you plug them in, but it's spoofed. If you copy files to them, you will lose your data. Formatting, partitioning, checking the properties does not reveal the fraud, and it doesn't matter whether you're using Windows, Mac or Linux, the drive will appear to have terabytes of capacity, and the host machine you plug it into cannot directly and immediately detect anything wrong with that. And in previous videos I wasn't talking about external storage devices containing a spinning hard disk drive. Those can indeed contain terabytes of storage at quite reasonable prices. It's a different kind of technology altogether, although there are still fake versions of those around as we'll see in just a moment. So let's take a look at a couple of genuine terabyte level flash storage offerings. These products are real, and as you can see they're still quite expensive. Certainly not as eye-wateringly pricey as they were when they first hit the market, but still not cheap. Now we'll take a look at a gallery of some devices that are definitely fake. You might think I'm being presumptuous to say that all of these are fake. I'm not. These are definitely fake and you shouldn't buy them. And to show you what I mean by you shouldn't buy them, I'm going to buy one. This one in fact, which makes the following claims. It claims to have 2 terabytes of capacity with an 8 meg cache. It says it's got a USB 3.1 interface and an internal SATA interface. It describes itself as a hard drive and it's got a rotation speed there. So this is a device that's claiming to be an external spinning disk hard drive. I thought we'd just take a look at one of these this time for a bit of variety because if you want to see fake thumb drives, the previous videos have got loads of those. After a couple of days it arrived, and here's what it looked like out of the packaging. A rather nice little matte aluminium case and a short USB cable. It's also worth noting at this point that this case is too small to contain a 2.5 inch disk drive. Now I know smaller spinning disks have been made, but I'm also pretty certain we're not going to find one of those in here. But maybe it contains an M.2 or ESSD or something, right? Wrong. Those are expensive, and this is a scam, so whatever's inside is going to be dirt cheap. I'm not even going to plug it in and test it because, again, we've done that before. Let's just open it up and take a peek inside. The two little end plates come off after removing the screws and inside we can see mostly empty space plus a huge blob of hot glue. At this point I had all I needed to claim a refund on Amazon. It's clearly a fake drive, I told them so and they promptly refunded me. The Amazon system said I don't need to return the item, which is good because now we can carefully tear it down to see what's inside. So let's go over to Studio Shrimp for that. So interesting, isn't it, that that says it's a hard drive and, yeah. Okay, time for a teardown. Now, last time I tore down a device like this, I had to really butcher it and I kind of hacked it apart. And it turns out I didn't really need to. Several people in the comments, thank you, all of you, um, informed me that apparently you can dissolve hot glue with alcohol. So that's what we're going to try to do today. I've got some methylated spirits, which is a kind of denatured alcohol. Denatured as in, it has poison in it to stop you drinking it. Although that doesn't stop some people. And let's see if alcohol does dissolve hot glue. If this doesn't work, I will just add a bit of heat. And we'll try and melt it out. I kind of want to get this out of here without destroying this case because the case is the most valuable piece of this, I think. This little metal case could be quite useful as a little project box for something Arduino or Raspberry Pi. Well, I don't really see any indication that this is working. So I'm going to try something else. I'm going to warm that up and see if I can actually just melt it off. I'm going to let the alcohol all dissipate first, obviously. OK, this might seem a little bit weird because it is. I'm going to put it in this skillet and give it a bit of heat on both sides and hopefully that will loosen the glue. I've got a heat proof glove so that I can handle it when it's hot and I've got forceps on standby to try and pull out the contents here. 
Kind of funny how everything eventually turns into a cooking video on this channel. Just saying. Oh, I think it might be moving actually. Right, so actually, let's just see if we can do this with the. Yeah, here it comes. Okay, right, well, there it is. That's what was in there. Now, while the opportunity exists, I am going to try and pick out this hot glue that was in there, this big blob, because I want to try and reuse this case. Okay, well, what I found inside was a little bit surprising, but not in a good way, so don't worry about that. Let's have a look at what we've got. There's the USB-C connector. Now, I expected this just to be a separate board, kind of glued on and then soldered across on the four backward compatible wires to the USB 1.1 interface, but it does look like that's a native USB connector. So, you know, I guess they got that bit right. What really surprised me was what they're using for storage on here, which is a micro SD card. So this is actually, this board is a little micro SD carrier, which is obviously designed to have either USB 2 or 1.1 on one end, and USB type C, so 3.1 on the other end. Quite interesting, isn't it? What do you think the chances of that SD card, that unbranded black, probably unmarked SD card, having a two terabyte capacity? What do you reckon the chances of that are? I would say slim to none. I mean, it's a completely unmarked card. It doesn't look like anything's been sanded off of it or anything. It's just a completely unmarked an unbranded SD card, micro SD card. Nothing at all on there to indicate capacity. So there we go, that's what's inside that device. I hope it's clear by now that this is fake. I mean, it it doesn't meet the specifications. So let's have a look at the specifications. Specification said USB 3.1, so okay, maybe. They said it was a spinning hard drive in here. That's not what that is. And they said it was an internal SATA interface, which clearly it isn't. It's internally micro SD. So I hope that's been enough to establish that this device is fake. I am tempted to go ahead and test this, but we'll see about that. And if I want to reuse this case, I think I will have to get myself some isopropyl alcohol because that did not clean up well. Uh, methylated spirits, which is methanol, clearly doesn't seem to touch hot glue at all, which is interesting. What's most peculiar about this whole story is a few days afterwards, I received another package from Amazon. I can't show you the shipping label because obviously that has got all my details on it, but the shipping label was very, very similar. It's hard to tell whether it's the same Amazon vendor because I don't really know which part of the code indicates that, if anything. But what was inside this package was a bar of chocolate. And I didn't order this. This does not appear on my Amazon account. So I don't know where this came from and I don't think it's an error. I think this is actually a case of brushing where they've taken my personal details from the order that I ordered on Amazon and they've created another account with my name and address and details. And they've used that to order something on another one of their marketplace front ends. And then because they've obviously, that's generated tracking, they've just shipped out a chocolate bar, that's generated tracking. They can use that tracking to add a review on a product. So I suspect somewhere there's a Milka bar that's busy being changed into some other technological product and there's a glowing review apparently from me on that product which is verified as a genuine purchase. But of course I can't find that, I've got no way of finding that. That whole thing is called brushing where they basically steal your details from one of your genuine purchases, create a fake account in your name and then use that fake account to buy cheap items to pad out their feedback. But I don't think I'll be eating this bar of chocolate for two reasons, one of which just being the advice my mum always used to give me, which is don't accept sweets from strangers, but just also because this seems like one of those situations where an excess of caution is better than a shortage. Now I did decide to test this device a little bit after the teardown and the results were both weird and confusing. To begin with, let me make it perfectly clear that I acknowledge the possibility that I could have damaged that little board when I heated up the glue or peeled it off. That's possible, however it's undeniable that what was inside this product does not remotely resemble what was advertised. And I hope we can also all agree that this micro SD card here is vanishingly unlikely to be a 2 terabyte card. In testing, which I did on a machine that's not my main production machine, Plugging the device in appeared to be doing more than just attaching storage. It encountered an error. Okay, that could be my fault, as previously mentioned. But when I pull that micro SD card and plug it directly into a passive adapter, I get nothing at all. No device present. I tried two different adapters, one active and one passive, even though I know both of these adapters do work. 
GPARTED does show a 2TB disk though, so my best guess here is that the spoofing is actually done on this carrier board. I think the SD to USB adapter here has had its controller reprogrammed to report a 2TB storage volume, and maybe it isn't even trying to store anything on the SD card at all, although it does seem to need it there. I tried it without the card and it does nothing, but I also tried it with a 32GB micro SD card of my own that I know works and that didn't even turn up as a device. So whatever's going on here is quite arcane, and perhaps it's even that way on purpose. Anyway, in conclusion, fake flash is still everywhere, and fake spinning hard disk drives also exist. The main takeaway I think for this is please don't assume that the passage of time is going to make scams just stop happening. That isn't the case. I don't really have any 100% solid advice on how to avoid the fakes, because there are even cases where counterfeit branded products get mixed in with real branded products on the shelf at Amazon. But the usual rules of thumb are still true. If something looks like an amazing bargain, it really could be a scam. And if you buy any kind of removable storage, test it fully. And I don't mean just formatting it or checking the properties. Use something like H2TestW. Link in the video description. I hope this has been interesting. Thanks for watching, stay safe from scams, and I hope to see you again soon.